Hi, this is Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang, and this is the next installment of our Next Level series. Um, next Level is sort of a, a management style that we practice in Jefferson Parish, where I challenge our directors to take their departments to the next level. We have a limited amount of resources that the public gives to us, and I think it's our duty and our obligation to um, deliver as much as we can as efficiently as possible. So I tell them, I want you to take chances. I want you to try new things. I have your back on this. And you know, in that process, we've really had some directors who really take their department to the next level. And I like highlighting them in this series. So today with us is Mario Bazile, who is our recreation director. Hello, Hi. Mario. How are you? Good, doing great. So I knew Mario from before. I was always impressed with his work process. I mean, I, and you can tell us your background, but really that's, Mario, why I did ask you to be a member of our team, because I thought you were the person who could take our recreation department to the next level. So why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about, uh, about your background? I started out, um, I, I got my degrees in education, and um, so I taught, I was a, uh, an administrator at, um, at the middle school level. Um, I also, during the summers, because I was a teacher, I ran uh, a summer camp program for kids, and um, that became a really, uh, a really good business. So then I left teaching, and um, I just focused, um, in 2008, I just focused on summer camps and just did summer camps, and we got up to about 27 camps, and uh, it was, it's very good business. And when you called me, I was, um, I don't know, for some reason I, I, I wanted this job. I knew you, I knew you were, you and know, we had you never were the, talked about it. no, you were the, you know, you were a, a great choice by the voters. I thought it was, you know, new direction. And um, I said, man, I don't know, I'd love to be a part of your administration. And, and you called me in November. I'll never forget the call. It was in my backyard and you called me and um, I was, I was just so excited because it's a, I like a challenge. I'm, I'm part of um, Jefferson Parish all my life. I, I coached at, uh, coached and played at Bright Playground. My kids play at Girard Playground. I'm vested here, and I'm vested in the in the recreation department. It's been great. I, I, I'm really, I'm having fun. So, I thank you for that. I think that when I would hear you talk about your your summer camp program, and I saw the growth that you did with that program, um, I saw someone who was willing to just take the chances and try new things after really studying it. And I think that's really what you do. So. One of your initiatives, and, and Mari, you really came on, we just came in with a new council and a new administration in January 2020. Obviously, you know, COVID hit just a few months after that. So it was difficult circumstances for you to work under, but I think you've been able to do a lot. You certainly pivoted your resources to still deliver services. But one of the things that we discussed that you did, and I'm really impressed by, is what you're calling the model playground. Because we're a large parish, we have facilities all over this parish so different. Talk to us about what you call the model playground. I'm new to government, but I was a user of, the, of, of Jefferson Parish Recreation. So you have a certain opinion when you come in. Um, and then when I got into the job, I started talking to the employees. We started going East Bank and West Bank and really get an understanding of, of what the current status is of JPRD. And what, what I quickly realized is that we're not consistent. You know, there were services on the East Bank that were different from the West Bank and facilities. We're trying to be consistent with what we provide to the public. Doesn't matter the size of the playground, the amenities at a playground, the people at the playground for that matter, the staff. We need to have high standards for everything we do from the staff, you know, how the staff greets the public. How do we communicate to the public? Um, the, the, the way we set up our leagues, our programs, all of that needs to be consistent and at a high level. So. That's really what the model playground is. It's, it's breaking down everything we do for the public, not only at the playgrounds, but also uh, the different recreational parks, Lafayette Park, Park Day for Me, the walking trails, Bucktown. You know, this department is so huge. It's a matter of just trying to find the specifics at each playground that uh, we can identify and we can raise the standards. And that will then become the model playground so that in years to come, whether I'm here uh, the supervisors are here, it doesn't matter. The system's in place and the system is going to drive who we are in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So that's really what the model playground is. What I've liked about your management style is that you want to see that level of expectation at all the playgrounds, but you're not advocating a, for a cookie cutter view of everything. So you have also taken certain playgrounds 
and created something different with it. It doesn't always have to be evenly across the program. It's like what you're saying, that all year sports that you do at certain, talk to us about that. And we, we just talked about that, like baseball all year or so, to enhance people's right. skill set. The department is in a way that we're set up at seasons. You know, this time we play baseball, this time we play basketball. Um, and we need to look at things a little bit differently because there are other outside forces. There's travel ball, there's, um, you know, there's AAU basketball. There's all kinds of things that are, are, are pulling our kids away from the playgrounds. So instead of just ignoring that, we need to see, well, what, why are they leaving? What, where are they going? What can we do within the recreation department to bring those kids back and meet the needs? And part of that is um, setting up these, these academies. So we're gonna, we're gonna have this summer, we're at Nicholson Playground, we have, um, we have a basketball academy where kids can play basketball during the summer. And it's pr predominantly instructional and developmental uh, we will have a, a you know a league where they'll have games and and uh, you know we'll keep scoring all that, but it's predominantly designed to um, to get the kids ready for the for our true basketball season that will happen in the late fall. Uh, we'll be having baseball. We're going to do a fall baseball league for our younger kids, our seven, eights, nines, and tens at Bridge City on the West Bank and Delta Playground on the East Bank. When the season ends in baseball and softball these kids sometimes they gravitate. We may not see that child again until next baseball season. And that's something that I really believe we can do better at. We can see, okay, why, why are we not gonna see this child? Well, they love baseball and softball and they don't, we don't offer anything. So we're gonna start with this face, fall baseball, softball uh, academy. Again, developmental, instructional, and let's see uh, if we can get those kids at the end of the season to come back and join us in the fall. And it's also this notion, I mean, I grew up, you know, playing sports, I loved it. I've been like you on all sides of it, the player, the screaming parent in the stands, the coach, right? Um, but the issue of travel ball and club ball, yeah. and for a long time, you know, it was this notion of you had to pick one or the other, and we realized that that's not good for the, for the citizen, that's not good for the athlete, that we've got to find a way to work with club and we can enhance one another right? right and I think I appreciate that you've taken that view because I think you don't want families to have to choose between am I going to go play with my playground or I'm going to go play with my club so right. we've got to work together on that and and we're all in it for the same thing I mean it's yeah. all about the, the child anyway why not work with these organizations look a lot of times um, they have very good athletes they've got great coaching why wouldn't we want to bring them into the fold and have them matriculate at, at our playgrounds into our leagues you know, we're only going to be better by having some of these coaches that, that have the knowledge to be able to give to our kids. Right. So it's working well. Right. Absolutely. You have a lot of technology that you're bringing into recreation, um, which talk to us a little bit about that. And I'm really excited about the app that's yeah. coming up. So the technology um, is going to be fantastic. I mean, this is something... Communication, I believe, um, we can solve 90% of the problems with just communicating better. Not only internally with our staff, but to the public. We have an app, we're gonna have an app developed, we've already got the agreement to do it, and this app is gonna be able to allow us to communicate on an individual playground level. So, Gerard or Pard, um, the supervisors at these, at these playgrounds will be able to set their leagues, uh, set up these small groups where parents can then uh, receive push notifications. I mean, uh, everybody get, gets push notifications on their phones these days. I mean, I drove down uh, the street and uh, Starbucks reminded me that I could get a cup of coffee uh, with a push notification. So, you know, we want to let people know um, your games are rained out or uh, here's, your, here's, your, here's your team assignment. Um, this special event's going on at the park this, this week. It's just another way everyone has their phone. This is gonna change how we communicate with the public is this app, so I'm real excited about this. Um, and then not only that, but the services that every playground provides. Parent will be able to decide, I wanna know about volleyball, walking trails, and splash parks, and they sh select those within the app, and then those push notifications will come relevant to what they've selected. So it's gonna be very uh, interactive, which is nice, and. Um, 
it's we're going to elevate our game right. and we're going to communicate better to the public. And look, this was being done before, but we all know how it was being done. It was one parent who, you know, took the initiative to get everybody on one text string and that's how you would find out your information, but yeah. it required somebody to step up and it wasn't part of our system. So that's right. this will be the official word from you or your staff member as to what the latest is, up to date with the weather. So that's, right. that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, we and I was involved with you when and I know before you came on, I said, Mario, you know, get to know the department, and if you need to reorganize it, um, which often I'm a, I'm a big, um, I'm a big fan of making the chart work for you, making the organization. We reorganized it in all of administration, and you went through a similar reorganization that we had to go to the personnel board, and luckily, unfortunately, they supported us in that effort. So, talk to us about the management reorganization that you just went through. When I first got to recreation. Um, it took me a couple of months, but I got a chance to really talk with employees in the department. And I quickly realized that we've got some very dedicated, smart, um, driven people in this department. Um, the one problem was that we were not set up for success. In the past, we were divided by geography. There was an East Bank version of JPRD and a West Bank version of JPRD. And sometimes they just didn't know what the other one was doing. So instead of being geography centered, we've changed it to be functional centered. So now instead of having an administrator over the East Bank and an administrator over the West Bank, we've got an administrator over function. So we've got an administrator over athletics, we've got one over maintenance, one over capital projects, um, and one of, over leisure services. And what this does is it allows the administrators to focus on a function and it, it really helps downstream because now you've got your area coordinators uh, in charge of athletics. They understand, they can focus on a function to provide better services to the public. So um, we, we've just got everything set up now, beginning of the year, administrators are in place. Uh, so we're moving in that direction and what we're seeing during this process is that we do have some work to do. You know, um, there shouldn't be, uh, again, going back to consistent services, you know, we need to make sure that we're equitable, that we're fair, um, and that we're applying the same policies and principles across the board, that we're just not uh, singling out one uh, playground or one location based on where, where they're located on the east or the west bank. Um, and I think the staff that are now in place have embraced that. We've got the downstream structure now to be able to go and we've got, it, we've got now our zone managers which are really our, uh, our groups that they're in teams now. Maintenance and, uh, zone manager and a athletic zone manager. They, they have a set number of playgrounds on both the East and West Bank where they go out and they're seeing things differently now because they're working together. They're communicating. That's the main thing is that's our internal communication um, structure that we're trying to build. That's, that's where it starts, is with those, uh, with those organizations that we did. So we're real excited about that. And the organizations, uh, it's working. It's work in progress, of course, but it's working. We learned a lot during COVID of finding creative ways to continue to deliver services, which was really a challenge for your department because you're really about getting people together, obviously, and having to um, do sports together. and, and your senior services together but I was very impressed because I thought you were very creative and still reaching out to seniors and I saw the birthday parties online and that kind of thing but the video training series that you all push was was good and will continue talk talk a little bit about that and how we're going to keep using it because I think it's it's a it's a great new development for us that came out of COVID. When COVID hit of course you know our our business is the public so we provide all these services to the public and when that that came to a screeching halt, um, we all got together and we said, okay, under the guidelines of uh, the mandates from the governor, what can we do? You know, what's safe to do? So we started brainstorming different things. And the first thing we started very early on was, well, if we can't meet in person, let's, we know we want to have baseball and softball season. Let's bring in, you know, let's do this Facebook series. So one of our department members, uh, Gary Schmidt, he says, well, look, let, let me do some lessons for the, for the parents. We can't meet at the playgrounds. Let me show the parents what they can do to get their kids ready at home. So that's how it kind of developed. And um, it was, I think we did 14 different uh, training sessions where Gary would bring, um, use my son, used his son, used some friends, you know, in small groups, how to catch a fly ball, batting lessons, um, how to maintain a good quality glove, you know, oiling your glove, working it through. Um, 
So it was fantastic. And what we did with that series uh, from last year is we actually started using that in our programming where you know, some of these coaches coming in in the five, six, and seven-year-old leagues, we offered that as, a, as some training mechanism. You know, some of the parents, the parents are great because they want to help out, they want to volunteer, but sometimes they don't have uh, the, the amount of skills that they need. So they brought them in and um, they use these videos with their, with their teams. So that's what we want to do with all the sports. We want to we want to cre start creating these little instructional video series so that when a season starts, volleyball or basketball, we can have sort of a, a basic uh, skill level for our younger kids so that the parents coming in that want to volunteer have a baseline for how to instruct. I mean, I, um, I volunteered soccer. I don't know anything about soccer. If I had a little, little instructional video to just go and look at, so we're going to be providing that to the public, and it's going, to, it's, it's going to be really nice. And it's so important that when you have kids at a young age coming into a sport that they learn the proper technique to do things, right? Because we've all been yeah, having absolutely. to undo things that they've oh. learned, and through muscle memory or right. the re repetition, they keep making those same errors. So it's, it's really important that they learn it the right way absolutely. in a sport. At the beginning. Yes. Um, talk about new sports. We've we've introduced a lot of new sports in the past year and a half. Um, you know, you had me out on the tennis court with yes. the family, you know, um, clinic. Talk to us about the new sports that you've introduced. So the first is tennis. Um, you know, we, we're trying to figure out ways we can bring the kids back to the park. And and again, a lot of times we're in these we're in these seasons. We're in these bubbles of these are the sports you play. And um, a gentleman, uh, Marcel, came in and asked us about offering t youth tennis. And we started out with 30 kids in the beginning of January, and um, he's on his now fourth session. Now we're up to 130 youth that are playing uh, youth tennis in, our, in JPRD now, which is fantastic. Um, we just introduced our swim teams. We're gonna have a swim team on the East Bank and the West Bank in coordination with the YMCA that are gonna be competing against each other in these swim meets. So it was a tryout basis through the YMCA. Uh, and so they've joined an East Bank and a West Bank team. So we've had two teams for the first time, uh, which is real exciting. We've got the Lafiniere uh, Soccer Complex, mm -hmm. the, the turf project. That's it's, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Real that. excited, yeah. Um, but our plan is to offer lacrosse and rugby on those fields as well as part of JPRD youth programming. Mm -hmm. So that'll be something new. Hopefully, that we'll get that going in the fall. Um, so, and I think going back to some of these academies that we're doing, just getting outside of our bubble and um, having the staff that is willing. I mean, they, my staff constantly comes to me, can we do this? And m my answer is always, why can't we? Right. You know, let's figure it out. So these, the youth sports is always fun. Wrestling is another thing that could potentially be, be coming on board in the near future. Um, so good things are happening wow. with youth sports. And also, let's not forget our family programming that we have. So we have some upcoming events, and so this is some new programming too. Yes. So it looks like a busy fall. Talk to us about some of those things. We're looking to kind of capitalize on some of the things that, uh, that were developed out of COVID. You know, families became, were forced really to be closer and to bond in certain ways that they're not normal, you know, not structured, not so much structured. So. Um, we, I worked with uh, the Leisure Services Administrator and we started to talk about ways we can incorporate more family programming, uh, family movie nights. Um, we're doing a Christmas get, get together for families. We're gonna be doing a spectacular at Lafayette Park. Um, we're gonna have a kickball league for families. So just more family-centered programming that's a little bit less unstructured. It's, it's more of a, let's bring your, bring your, bring your family out and let's have a good time. Let's uh, you know. Let's engage and, and, and meet new people too. That's an, it's a it's a meeting place as well. So that's really what our leisure services is kind of tasked with this year is to provide opportunities for families to get together and meet new people. So Mario, I think we we've both recognized the importance of sports not not just as a quality of life thing and as activities for the family, but really as an individual. Sports was instrumental, I think, to both of us in transforming our lives. I mean, when do you ever get that, you know, I work really hard at something, I can see myself improve, I might fail, mm -hmm. I might succeed. That team, you know, I yeah. think it's, it's critical. Um, it, was, it was a big thing in my life. 
I know it, sports yeah. has been big in yours. That's why you do your job so well. So what am I forgetting? Am I, if I, am I forgetting anything that you wanted to talk about? I, I, I want to, um, again, say how, I, first of all, I'm having a blast. This is a great job. Um, you know, getting a chance. I, I, I'm results driven, and I think the staff is as well. Um, we focus a lot on the little things on a daily basis. You know, look, uh, clean restrooms, soap, soap in the dispensers, um, uh, field lines that are straight. Uh, you know, it's just it's the little things that people recognize as soon as they walk into a playground, and we're looking at the things that we can see throughout the parish where we can have quick victories. You know, I want to I want to see immediate things. You know, and sometimes I'm learning. A government send, tends to run a little slowly. Yeah. We've got a, a philosophy in the department: get better faster. That's what we. That's that's our motto. We get. We need to get better faster in every aspect of what we do. So, um, we look at the little things a lot, and we try to make sure that we're focused on our main mission, which is providing high-level service to everybody in the parish, private, predominantly kids. Well, impatience in government sometimes means you're making change, right? You're just frustrated by the by the timing. By the timing. Yeah. So we want to thank you for being a part of our team, and thank you. I'm really excited. Have been since you've gotten on board about all the new and exciting things happening Great. in the Recreation Department. Thank you so much. Thanks.